Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to this week's update. I'm Alexis Lomax. And I'm Maris Manning. Breaking news on Newman's campus. This morning at 10.30 a.m., the main water line had between the Child Development Center and Bachman and the Bruder Life Center has burst. So it was flooding from there to the main entrance of the, build, of the Bachman building. So dining has been moved for resident students to the Knights Cafe and will have, limited, have a limited menu and for dinner this evening, the meal will exchange for operational swipes, will be accepted. And also the buildings will be closed, Bachman and the Child Development Center and Bruder. But uh, we will keep you up to date as more information is developed. It's been one week since Special Counsel Robert Mueller submitted his report to Attorney General William Barr. And the controversy surrounding the investigation is far from over. On Sunday, Attorney General William Barr released a four-page summary of Mueller's findings, but many on the Hill are demanding to see the full report when, on whether members of the Trump campaign worked with Russia to interfere the election. The report is said to be over 300 pages long, and the length of Mueller's report suggests that he backed up the investigation with concrete evidence. How much of that evidence will we see and find out is still being determined. Democrats are calling for the full report to be released and demand more clarification from, from Barr, who exonerated the president from any wrongdoings, even though the report specifically indicates that Mueller could not find enough evidence to Im implicate or exonerate the president without reasonable doubt. Barr has indicated to members of Congress that he will miss, the, miss their April 2nd deadline to release the report likely setting up a long legal battle which, with subpoenas in an already intensely divided political environment. This past Tuesday on March 26, the charges against actor Jesse Smollett for allegations sta for staging a racial and homophobic crime against himself were dropped after prosecutors reviewed circumstances of the case, and Smollett agreeing to forfeit his bond of $10,000 to the city of Chicago as a condition of the charges being dropped. Police said that they had enough evidence to prove that Smollett had paid the brothers to participate in the attack, but Smollett's defense team had managed to help him maintain his innocence during the investigation. Upon the charges being dropped, Chicago Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson and Mayor Rahm Emanuel released statements for, over the prosecutor's decisions. Johnson had not consult, been consulted beforehand and learned about the charges being dropped the same time as the public due to his attendance at a police graduation ceremony. Meanwhile, Emmanuel expressed that Smollett owed the city an apology due to the inconvenience of the investigation. Smollett was issued to owe the city of Chicago over $130,000 in the next seven days to cover the cost in the investigation. 20th Century Fox Television and Fox Entertainment issued a statement of relief of the charges being dropped, but did not comment on the fate of Smollett's character on the show Empire. Once again, Apple has big plans in store for their company. On Monday, the company released information about new Apple features we can expect to see as early as this summer. Apple TV+, Plus, News+, Plus, Apple Arcade, and, Apple, and the Apple Card were the main features in their announcement. Apple TV Plus will be available in the fall for, cu for customers to stream all new and original TV shows and movies in almost every genre. The streaming service is set to include one-of-a-kind stories told by some of the most creative people in television and movies, including Oprah Winfrey. What's better than Apple News? Apple News Plus. The new version will allow readers to have complete access to almost every magazine and newspaper of their choice. If you're into playing games, then you'll love Apple Arcade, also available in the fall. For this, Apple has really gone far and beyond the normal. Over 100 games, no ads, and no in-app purchases required, compatible with all devices, and can play offline. Feeling bummed that all these amazing features won't be available till the fall? Good news is that the Apple Card will be available this summer. The Apple Card is far from an ordinary credit card, for, star for starters, you won't have to worry about carrying a credit card around because the credit card will be sync up to your Apple Pay and wallet app. 
Additionally, there's no hidden fees and encourages its users to spend what they want and only play a little back in interest. It's amazing how Apple's really ahead of the game. Now let's head over to Raya with the weather. Thanks, Lexi. Today's forecast, we have clouds with some breaks of sunshine at 68 degrees. Saturday, for those of you heading down to Citizens Bank Park for the Phillies game, you can enjoy partly sunny skies at 71 degrees. A cooler Sunday, though, with a chance of rain showers at 54 degrees. Monday, you can plan your April Fool's Day pranks under sunny skies and a high of 48 degrees. Tuesday brings sun with increasing clouds and a slight chance of rain in the evening with a temperature of 53 degrees. Our Wednesday starts off with a steady rain in the morning with showers continuing throughout the afternoon. We will have a high of 56 degrees. Spring-like weather returns on Thursday with partly sunny skies and a high of 65 degrees. Approaching the following weekend, we seem to have a repeat of this weekend with temperatures not going below the mid to upper 60s. And that's your weather update. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Rhea. Our very own Jake Lobrack sat down with Julia Howe to discuss her path on relearning how to walk and eventually becoming a member of the Newman University of Cross Country team. Walking. Something that everybody learns how to do at a young age. But what if you woke up at 17 years old and no longer knew how to? I had woken up one day and was leading a normal day, went to classes, and out of nowhere, the next thing I knew, I was on a stretcher on the way to the hospital because I had my first ever seizure. Julia Howe, a junior at Newman University, has not let that moment define her nor her capabilities. I had to get transported to a children's hospital, and that's when they figured out that my body had forgot how to walk. So the first seizure, since I hadn't had one until I was 17, had caused a stress reaction in my body, and because of that, it resulted in me forgetting how to walk. So during the process of trying to figure out what was wrong, the main thing was, how are we going to get her to walk again? Because it was a situation where they didn't know if I was going to not walk for a day, for a year or ever again. And I remember the doctor telling me, if you're willing to fight, then you'll walk again. And I was ready. During the path of recovery, she had an army of supporters by her side. So I was really fortunate that when I had gotten sick, I went to a children's hospital who they had a team of doctors. So my neurologist, my psychologist, the physical therapist, they all worked together to come up with the best course of action. And I was so thankful that my parents were ready to fight this with me. I didn't have to do it alone. When I came to Newman, they like welcomed me with open arms. Determination, hard work, and a strong support system were three of the components to a steady recovery. Running has by far changed my life for the better because I've never learned more about myself than when I do run because it's a battle between myself and no one else. It's just me and my legs out on the course. Looking back on my experience, I know that if I had to redo it again, I wouldn't know how to handle it. But I think in that moment, I really learned what resiliency is when having the option of either moving forward or stopping everything and becoming so upset with what is your reality instead of changing it. And the biggest thing to me was taking the risk and knowing I don't know if I will be able to walk and I don't know what is to come, but just trying it really showed me how strong a human could be. Reporting for the Newman Update, I'm Jake Lobrack. Awesome. Now let's head back over to the monitor with Amanda, who's got our feel-good story of the week. Amanda? Thanks, Amaris. Well, recently there have been high school students and middle school students bringing positivity and joy to so many people. Most high school students dream of being on prom court and having the opportunity to be prom king or queen. However, Sean Mabato received word that he was elected to prom court at Liberty High School. When he received word, he went to the prom committee and requested that he be removed from the ballot. In turn, Sean requested that they add his friend Edgar Hernandez, one of his good friends with autism, who brightens the day of so many at his school. After both the committee and Edgar agreed to the change of ballot, Sean started a campaign on Instagram and Snapchat where he told his followers, Edgar for prom king. The, word, the night of prom, Edgar was filled with excitement and disbelief when, he was, when his name was announced as prom king. 
When the crown was placed on his head, all his peers began to cheer and chant his name. Now Edgar enjoys wearing his, cr his gold crown to school, and students give him high fives and fist bumps as they pass him in the hallway. Another student from Pittsburgh, PA, who has begun a wave of positivity at her school, and this girl's name is Gabby Fogg from in eighth grade. One day she decided to post a sticky note that said, you are beautiful in the girl's room at, the, at her middle school in an effort to help stop people's negative thoughts about themselves. One of her peers, uh, jo Josie Homestead, saw her note and decided to join in the message of positivity. Josie also left a stack of, stack of post-it notes um, in the bathroom and in encouraged other girls to write positive notes. The girls claim that almost all the girls have joined in the, in the campaign and have left positive notes. They say that this has been a reminder for them and joining them together in unity as they forget the, the physical beauty that they see in the mirror and focus on their inner beauty. Also, also for those of you who have, out there who have feel-good stories, feel free to send them in to new media at, at newman.edu. Thanks. Send it back to the desk. We had a big week in professional sports this week, and the biggest story is the MLB's opening day. The Phillies started off their season with a bang, literally, the middle as Andrew water. McCutcheon hit a home run during his first official at-bat of his Phillies career. In addition to McCutcheon going yard, Franco knocked his first homer of the year, and Reese Hoskins hit the first grand slam of his career. The Phillies knocked off the Braves 10-4 to and finished their three-game set this weekend. Following the Phillies win, the Eagles took another off-season victory as they sent a 2020 sixth round pick that could turn into a fifth rounder for running back Jordan Howard. Howard had rushed for 935 yards last season with nine touchdowns. The 24-year-old acquisition caps off a busy off-season reload for the Eagles this year. Madness is still in the air as the final series of games in the Sweet 16 take place tonight. Took place last night, both Virginia and Gonzaga lived up to their rankings as they knocked off Oregon and Florida State respectfully. Purdue and Texas Tech also able to upset Tennessee and Michigan, respectively. The Elite Eight is set to kick off on Saturday and finish Sunday. This weekend at Newman, the softball team hosts Cambrini tomorrow, and the baseball team hosts Ruggers on Sunday. That's all for sports this week. I'm Billy Hunt. Let's send it back to the desk. Thanks, Billy. Before we go, let's take a look at the follow-up story that ended our Newman Update series last semester. Newman Media surprised their very own Jake Lebrac with a pair of Encroma colored blind glasses. Let's take a look at the interview and see what, ha what they've done for him thus far. At a young age, I was diagnosed with strong Dutton color blindness. And to me, it wasn't always like a big difference in my life. Like obviously I would see things differently, but you just kind of adapt to it. And so it was really cool getting the color blind glasses to actually see what blue and purple looks like. Because uh, over the years, I've developed a sense to when I see what I would interpret as blue, I would flip that to purple. So now with these, uh, the glasses, it's pretty neat to actually be able to see blue or purple and be able to see what they truly look like. I'm involved in our Newman Update show, which is a new show we put on at the end of every week. And during that show, the whole Newman media group and Newman Update crew surprised me with the Enchroma colorblind glasses. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's so and so I went out, I was floor directing, and then they started reading a story about Christmas. And I was like, huh, didn't see this one in the script. <laughs> and someone took my headset and I was like, what, what's going on here? Um, and that's when they presented me the Enchroma colorblind glasses. That's green, <laughs> yellow, orange, and red. That's so, that's so It was weird. such an awesome thing to kind of experience because, you know, going through, since I was a little kid, always seeing blue as purple and purple as blue, green as red or brown or yellow, and not being able to tell the difference between some of these, I could, you know, p physically point to them and be like, yeah, that's blue, I know that's blue. It, the way Newman Media did it was such a memorable experience because they did it over the air. I had no clue. Um, it was definitely a day to remember. We end the show with some breaking news. Attorney General William Barr just announced that he will release the th over 300 page um, report in its redacted form by mid-April. We will have more pertaining to this story next week. Thank you for watching, and I'm Alexis Lomax. And I'm Maris Manning. Have a great weekend.